How's it going friends and welcome to the channel. In this video I'm going to be doing Airfix's 148th TSR2. So personally I'm not overly bothered by the TSR2. I'm sorry it's just not my bag uh, really but a friend gave me this kit and I thought you know what let's just build it. Now I didn't want to just do this in the flat out white because it's just a little bit boring there's not much I can really do with it. So I went searching for replacement decals, mainly just the original ones. But then I come across this decal sheet which had several different markings on. And there's one in particular that really interests me and there's one I've wanted to do for a while. And that is the Swedish camo. Now this is a bit of a difficult camo, especially when you haven't got a plan on how the camo is supposed to be done. So this was a bit of a challenge, but I've got to admit I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to do this one. So. So grab yourself a brew and a bicky and let's turn this TSR2 in a totally Swedish ride. Yes, I said it, I didn't think of this up, I found it somewhere else but I thought it was cool, so let's go. Well, I think this one actually is going to be a relatively quick and uh, relatively simple build. Um, there's not really all that much to it, particularly the cockpit, it's probably made up of all about, I don't know, about 10 parts if I remember rightly. It was very simple. I wasn't going to put too much effort into the cockpit because by the time the canopies are on and the way the canopy windows are, um, you're not really going to see much of it. So I did a fairly basic job, painted up the cockpit seats and all that. So, you know, very simple job because it's not going to be seen very well later on. Now, I know this is a fairly old kit now, um, but the detail actually is not too bad, especially in the wheel bay areas and the bomb bay area, they're actually quite uh, quite nice. The fitting of the intakes wasn't too bad, there's a little bit of seam, gappage I should say, more than seam, that needs to be fixed, but you know, nothing major. They kind of clip in to the side of the fuselage and that was generally about it for that area. Um, most of this is all in relatively large chunky pieces. So there's not really much to actually talk about on this build. So generally, like I said, the, the build of this is fairly straightforward and simple. There's a couple of little bits that need to be sorted. So there's a this section here sort of drops down uh, a little bit. It may actually be the fact that I may need to remove a little bit uh, from underneath the wings because I didn't really do all that much cleanup. So just a little bit of styrene card just in there at the back. And that actually sort of flushed it out, you know, smooth with the rest of the wing. I know people have had issues, or say issues, saying that the back part of that, the hump is a bit too large, but I'm not overly fussed. I'm not really over fussed with this build, to be honest with you, but I was given to it and thought I'll have a little bit of fun with it. As you can see, I've tinted the cockpit windows, just using some Tamiya Clear and a little bit of leveling thinner in there. A couple of light passes of that just to build it up. So I recently bought some of this vinyl mask. I think it's vinyl or something along the lines of. Um, so it's usually the stuff that you usually get for masking, you know, markings and stuff like that. So I've got some sheets of that, cut some small sections and plonked them onto the canopy. And just as you've seen with a cocktail stick, burn it into burn it, burnish it into the frame and then just cut around the framework just to, you know, obviously mask that part off. As you can see, I glued the canopies into place. They were a little bit off and there was a few bit of gaps around the hinges. In general, there's a few sort of gaps, so just some basic sanding and filling for this kit and that was about it. I also decided to, to get these upgrade tyres for the aircraft and these are really smart. They're pretty much exactly the same as the ones that are actually on the aircraft. There's a nice little bit of photo etch to go in the middle for the hub there as well. So as well as the tyres, the only other grades I bought was a pito tube and that was it. Everything else I did myself, I just did the wiring and tubing and stuff underneath the undercarriage. I didn't film it because it was quite difficult to actually do this at the best of times, never mind trying to film it. So I got some photos of the piping and just roughly got it as close to possible as the real thing. So as quick as that, we were already on to painting. So, I didn't really want to go down the route of doing it exactly as the TSR2 is because white is just boring. So I decided to do something different. I thought I'd do a what if. Now, originally, I was going to do any form of British markings of the time, and I thought, well, people have already done that, so I thought I'd do something a little bit different. So I thought I'd go Swedish. Now, I've always wanted to do the sort of Swedish, I think they're called forest markings or forest camera or something like that. 
So I've decided to do it on this. Now, this was a little bit difficult because I had no real mapping to go off. So everything was kind of roughly based off a of vegan and I just did the best I could. I've only really managed showing it on the wings here, how I did it. So I've worked it from the lowest colour to the darkest and masked it off as I went along because trying to film the actual fuselage was an absolute pain in the backside because this thing is massive. Well, it's quite big, it's not massive, it's a bit of an over exaggeration, but it is, you know, it's a 48 scale model, so it's quite large. Overall, I was quite pleased with this. I had to go and redo a few bits because it either not leveled, lined up the masking very well, or there was a little bit of overspray, but that was quickly done. There was, there's only supposed to be a light, a tan, and a black, and I tried to redo uh, the lighter green, uh, and I tried to mix it because I did it all just by eye and uh, I ended up doing it a little bit dark. So that's why there's a darker green in there than there actually should be. Decals obviously are aftermarket ones. These are extra decals. They were quite good. They went down really, really nicely. So for the weather of this, I went down a relatively simple route for this because I'm trying to do a couple of simple-ish builds at the moment. And I thought I'd just go for a simple dot filter. The colors I was actually quite happy with, in a way, didn't want to weather them, but to be true to myself, I had to. So I went for this dot filter. It's a very simple technique, and all you need to do, obviously, is use some oil paints, dab on the appropriate color. So for this, I've used white and yellow. The yellow is mainly to sort of mute the green a little bit. And all you need to do is use a dampen brush with a little bit of thinners on there. And all I did for this was just stipple it along to give it that faded look. For the world base, I used my trusty panel liner Tamiya Accent Brain. And I put some thinners down first, then just slapped it all the way through and removed some of the excess. I also did the same across the top of the aircraft and just adding a few little streaks there just for a little bit of extra interest. And again, I use it around the wheel hubs as well for a bit of a grimy look. To bring out some of the extra detail around the tyres, I just put a acrylic wash over it and it, all it was was a simple, a relatively light grey. And already we're coming to the finish line. Like I said, it's a very simple build this was. Um, removing the masking and I was very pleased that there was no bleed underneath that. I was a little bit worried about it, but I was very happy with the result. And all that was left to do was just super glue in the pito tube. Okay, so there we go, my friends. A relatively short video, this one, because admittedly there wasn't all that much uh, to do with it. It was actually quite a very basic kit. It wasn't too bad, details were okay. Yeah, I know there is some inaccuracies in it, particularly the hump at the back, um, that meets the, like, the front fuselage over the wings. He's not quite right, but it looks like a TSR 2 at the end of the day. Again, mainly because I'm not overly fussed by that. That may upset a few of you, I do apologize, but it's just not one of my th I'm not a jet boy, um, so <laughs> it's one of those things. I want to show you the finished model. I just want to say a massive thank you guys for watching. Also to John at Scale Modeling and Binding Means for being channel members. If you do like, if you would like to help uh, support the channel further, there are links in the description down below. If not, just please keep watching the videos, share them, like them, and if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. So guys, again, thanks ever so much for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed, and uh, hope you enjoy the finished model.